I think in the future learning will be more open and more accessible and more varied so that more people are able to learn in different ways and in di for different purposes across the lifespan so that learning will be life wide and lifelong. We might argue that learning has always been available, but often it was available in fairly, fairly narrow forms and to perhaps only a small section of the population worldwide. Uh, learning will be more accessible, more open and more available freely to everyone at any time and for any reason. There will be big changes in, in learning that will, that will come down the line and some of that is around the, the, the structures that we have in terms of a, a degree looking at micro-credentials, just-in-time training, um, and the way that e education might get, is getting, I suppose, packaged into, into smaller kind of samples. The future of learning is uh, uh, online and digital, because we need to uh, follow the, and adapt to and be proactive with the uh, UNESCO and uh, United Nations uh, development goals, especially in education, number four but also that, that the SDG 4 have influences and impact on all the other SDGs. And the only way forward is online uh, to reach the education for all. So the future of learning is um, likely to be much more flexible, more blended, more hybrid across the continuum of formal and informal learning. I think in terms of the process and uh, who is involved in the learning process, I think we're going to see many more, in, many more stakeholders involved. So it will be in higher education, academics working with learning designers and other stakeholders to make learning more engaging and especially as it goes more online. Outside of higher education and of, of other formal uh, education, we're going to see online learning uh, and online um, pedagogies coming into play within industry. Again, we can see that with some of the big industry players like IBM, Amazon. Uh, they're, in, they're investing in uh, education for their, for their staff and their employees. And I think we're going to see more organizations uh, utilizing online learning. Uh, the current model is often that people are spending a number of days attending workshops. Uh, that, that disrupts their, their whole work process by, by making uh, certainly the theoretical elements available online that staff can do in their own time and then perhaps coming for shorter workshops where they actually uh, participate in activities that uh, reinforce that, that theory. We're going to see those kind of changes. So it was just in time training for, for industry and industry requirements will become um, a, a much bigger user of online education. So away from higher education, online learning gives many more organisations such as NGOs and businesses the opportunity to upskill their employees or their target audiences. And so I think that there's potential for collaboration between universities and other organisations. So perhaps it's not so much that online learning will take away um, students from higher education, but that there will be opportunities for more authentic collaborations and um, curriculum development going forward. Outside of the higher education context, online learning can be useful to people across their lifespan from childhood right through to older adults post-retirement for any purpose, whether that be employment related, upskilling, credentialing, retraining, but also for reasons that are personal and spiritual and to do with hobbies and self-actualization in the widest possible form. Online learning can cater for any learning, for any person, for any reason. Good afternoon, global learners. Uh, welcome to the Festival of Learning and what is no doubt for me the highlight of our incredible week. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Sherry Kutu uh, to the floor. Sherry, as you no, do now, no doubt know, is a serial entrepreneur and angel investor and she serves on the boards of companies and charities and universities, so many to mention, but she's also invested in more than 60 companies as an angel, including LinkedIn, Zoopla, Love Film, Amazon, I could go on, and five venture capital firms. And she's also been awarded three honorary doc doc doctorates 
and um, she's also been appointed a commander of the Order of the British Empire. Um, and um, here today, um, Sherry is going to be chatting to us all about um, the, how we can help small businesses and charities survive and thrive through digital. And um, if you could all join me in welcoming um, Sherry to the stage. Thank you, Sherry. Thanks. Thanks very much. Uh, it's it's great to be here, and uh, no finer festival than a festival of learning. So uh, so thanks thanks very much. So yes, exactly. I wanted to talk about um, helping uh, what many what all of us are doing to help small businesses and charities survive and thrive through digital, and. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, I'm going to talk a lot about what everybody is doing, really. Um, but I wanted to start it with the background of um, why digital. Um, and again, I, I didn't really know this until we were in lockdown, but small organizations, as you can see here on the left hand side, um, have have kind of, you know, are at a low degree of digitization of uh, of their employees. Uh, compared to large organizations. So you see 91% is the average digitization of employees in big companies and small ones 10 to 49, just just 32%. And, uh, and that's for companies and charities as well are at a low level of digitization. And at a macroeconomic ba basis, you think, well, you know, okay, well, we know that there's a productivity gap in Britain and, uh, and, uh, and it's lower than it should be. Uh, between small and large, and it's the digitization that accounts for most of that productivity gap. And then, secondly, the loss in GDP. You see that if there, if that gap weren't there, um, that would mean 100 billion more uh, for our economy. And you think, well, that all sounds very macroeconomic, but um, what I really care about are people. So let's let's take it down a level and sort of think about what that what that lack of digitization or lack of learning about digital skills historically means in light of COVID. So the first is a chronic problem and a chronic issue that we've known for a long time and, and not addressed. Um, what uh, the pandemic has made us focus on is that now a fifth of UK SMEs are expected to run out of cash during COVID-19 and 72% of SMEs, uh, again, I, I don't really like calling SMEs either, but of small businesses expect COVID to reduce their revenues by, by 50%. Um, and at a human level, that means that the people who run those organizations are facing, you know, quite horrific decisions that may involve putting their companies into administration, uh, you know, making people redundant who are currently on furlough and a, and a bunch of other things. And that's just a, a terrible place, a terrible place to be. And the good news is that, well, we don't have to put up with that. Uh, and there's many things that uh, there, there's many things that are being done, and uh, and there's some great services that could mean that if you're working for a small business or you're working for a charity, you don't have to put up with that at all. Uh, so at the um, at the end of the uh, at well, the beginning of the lockdown, um, uh, Founders for Schools was approached by uh, Boston Consulting Group Digital Ventures, and about well, we need a platform. Clearly, this is a volunteering opportunity, and uh, can't we get volunteers who are in the large businesses and at a high level of digitization and see if they would volunteer to help the smaller companies and the charities that line their sorry line their high high streets? Uh, can't we you know can't we find can, you know can we fix that with volunteering? And we thought that was a really good idea. Um, the first thing that we started with though was kind of an analysis of who was doing what. Um, and there's uh, quite a lot of quite a lot of things, and I'm just going to quickly whiz through some of the things that organisations are doing, and then I'm going to talk about our uh, one particular solution that I think um, pulls them all together. Um, so we look at be the business, which is about productivity. You'd expect them to uh, unleash a, a bunch of things, uh, and they put together some great diagnostics and some uh, great material. You had Joe by Save the High Street that put together some great materials about making money to saving money, offering local delivery, uh, negotiating with your landlord, how to, again, how to help through a bunch of things. You've got Growth Mentor uh, who put together a, a number of things about how to grow. Um, although again, many, many people were focus focusing on just survival. Um, uh, Virgin Startup put together some great uh, webinars for founders, how to keep creative, legal matters, alternative funding, how do you manage on a budget, and again, really, really helpful. Um, 
there wasn't as many things as there should have been for charities. So I was really pleased to see with Reach Volunteering, uh, again, a focus on charities offering one-to-one -one support about how to manage projects, how to guide uh, you and your employees through, uh, sorry, through different processes, and some things about graphic design. Um, the CBI, as you'd expect, put together a really great coronavirus hub, uh, and again, really focused on materials and webinars and daily uh, and and daily sort of uh, talks about what what they were seeing and how they how they could help. Um, at a local government level, you saw the government put together a, a a huge support package, which they then execute through local enterprise partnerships. And so the Growth Hub uh, was really interesting in how they pulled things together as uh, as well at a local at a local level. And some big banks like Goldman Sachs have had for a long time a small business program uh, like the 10,000 small businesses. And they put together some really good um, webinars and very, very well curated information. And, uh, and that is all really helpful. In the round, when you when you analyzed what was you know what was what was there, there's quite a lot around managing cash flow. And of course, of course, if 75% of your revenues are gonna disappear, you're gonna think really hard about cash flow. There was a, a thankfully a lot about mental well-being. Um, but there wasn't as much about reaching more customers online as uh, as there could have been. So um so we worked, we've worked with, I think, 80 partners at this point to pull together into a single platform so that if you work for a small organization or you work for a charity, there is one place where you can go where you can literally access 80, 90 different partners information uh, so that can help you from getting a place of low digitization uh, to high digitization. And again, the gap is 91% of people in large businesses have had digital training so they can do their job well and access their customers versus 30% in small businesses. So we've got a 60 point gap to close um, and we need to close it quickly because otherwise um, they're not gonna be able to make their, um, <laughs> their payroll and, uh, and all sorts of other things. Um, so uh, we put together Boost Calls, Boost Workshops, Boost Skills and Boost Insights. And and, um, and I'm going to take you through what um, what that means for small businesses and, again, how it helps them navigate the, a number of different organizations that have put together phenomenal things. Um, so I'm going to start with, um, again, the types of offerings. That there was very few one-on-ones, very few organizations. Lots of people put content together and they put it into a coronavirus sort of hub often on their websites. But the ability to connect with a person and expert at a time of your choice um, seemed, to be, seemed to be absent. And we felt that this is really critical. Um, the reason it's really critical is because if you've underinvested before, you're feeling quite vulnerable, you're not really sure where to start. Um, what you really need is to talk to somebody who's an expert and they can help point you in a few point you in the right direction. So um, we uh, adapted a previous platform so that you could have one-on-one -on -one calls and that's what we call boost calls. Um, we don't limit, we don't think that people should be limited to one call. Um, we're actually anticipating in a 30 day period, maybe there'll be five or six one-on-one -on -one calls with different mentors who are different different experts from different, different areas. The other thing which um, is really important here are boost, boost workshops and um, not just for the leaders of the small businesses and the charities, but also for their entire teams, we need to make sure that they, um, that everybody has the opportunity to upskill themselves. Uh, and so we put together boost workshops where 30 or 40 people will go, but we expect eight or, you know, sort of eight different companies with four or five people from each of those companies. They email in what their concerns are at the, at the start and the presenters work with them and put together a presentation so that you can you can help 40 different or you know people in eight or nine different organizations at a time. Um, I spoke about um, uh, again the, uh, a number of organizations who uh, put really brilliant offerings together um, in the Boost Skills. Um, that's a combination of um, materials that are specifically for small businesses and for charities to help them get online and to help them with their financing and also to help them with their mental health. Um, 
again at the moment in the in the boost skills library if that's what you want to call it um there's some fabulous material from future learn uh again thank you very much justin again it's again you've put together amazing lessons and learnings uh and uh and webinars and i know that you're committed to putting uh, future learns committed to putting in more um google um and google garage have put together a lot of great webinars so has linkedin coursera bt um CBI, FSB, CMI. So we're, there's now a single place where most organizations um, information for small businesses to help survive and, and get past COVID are, are there. And the other thing that I think is really important is this fourth pillar is we've put together insights so that in your geographic area, you can actually see what's, what's going on. All of this being on a platform makes it a lot easier for, um, for everybody to see things. So I just want to go through um, here what what that might look like if you're a small uh, if you're if you lead a small business. Um, let's say you sign up on the first of, of July um, and uh, and you and you think your issue is paid social. Um, in that circumstance, we will go into the library and you know look through sort of 60, 70 different organizations, everything about paid social, and we'll deliver it into your inbox um, so that you don't have to look through. A whole bunch of different websites it's really delivered straight through to you um you'll get a, a again that's the personalized email the next day after you sign up again what we imagine happening is a one-to-one -one notification saying you said you needed help on this your mentor you know your mentor has just said yes and you know you gave three or four options about when you were available this is the one that they've said that they can make so Here's your link to your, you know, here's your link to your video, your video line, and make sure you put it in your, you know, put it in your calendar. Um, at a local level, it's really important because remember, a, a lot of the support packages from the government was is dispersed at a local government level. So the mapping that we have done with all of the local local government is is super important. So on here, you can see on the second July, we also pointed them to their local resource uh, growth hub resource. Um, so that they could, at a local level, find out what they need. Now, it's possible that digitally, you know, they, they can't get that at a local level, but they can get many, many things at the local. So the mapping of all of the resources on a national basis uh, that, that are available is super important. And we wanted to make it really easy to navigate that. So um, the, the next Days later, um, they've completed their one-to-one -one call with the expert that we've matched them from. They get a follow-up email and content to that. Now, in there, they uh, they get they start implementing their paid social strategy. When people onboard, they let us know the top three things on their mind, um, and so that's when we start uh, going down going down the tree of uh, the hierarchy of things that they that they need. So. A couple of days later, they attend a workshop on SEO basics because they said it was one of the things that they felt they needed. Uh, they get a follow-up email from content with that. They schedule their next boost call um, on landing page optimization because they've now heard uh, that landing page optimization is related to SEO basics, something that they hadn't heard about uh, two weeks before. Um, but they now know it's important for them to reach their customers on online. Um, Roll forward to a couple a couple of weeks later. You've got another boost call with a different expert. Um, they get the grant that's been awarded from the local authority that they didn't even know they were available for, um, and they start implementing a bunch of landing page hacks because they've also, in the meantime, you know, sort of rejigged their their homepage. Um, uh, and then again, this is just thirty, you know, sort of thirty days after the first the first interaction, they start seeing a decrease in cost per click uh, on Facebook advertising. They get a growth in the conversion rates and uh, a growth in online revenues. Um, that growth in online revenues translates to that organization not having to uh, decide with its directors uh, or its bankers that they need to go into administration or that they've really got a crisis because they've start to see light at the light at the end of the tunnel now historically it might take years to put together a course like this and what what i um I, you know you know that i really love anything about this uh wretched crisis that we're in um but it has promoted incredible collaboration and the winner here are the people that are running the small businesses and the charities uh particularly in this so um, just sort of looking at how you um, the match. I want to look a little bit into the the calls because the calls are the uh, uh, again an essential part of this. Um, you can see here the calls uh, in the first month are going for 
a huge amount in online marketing. You see the pink at the, the pink at the bottom, uh, and then business strategy. Um, again, they're questioning their business strategy, and maybe their business strategy historically didn't involve, um, you know, sort of digital, you know, web using websites and using e-commerce and things like that. Um, you can see that a number of them are talking about an asking about setting up a website for the first for the first time. And again, quite a lot of questions on SEO. So I think if they have set up a website, they discover that they're page 65 on 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 Google in the in the results um, because they hadn't um, thought about SEO and how 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 you optimize on that front. So these are the sorts of questions that we're getting from small businesses that have signed up um, already. Um, and on the sort of skills distribution, again, uh, the volunteers that are coming to us, again, we're getting a great match. Um, I talked about business strategy almost equal between business strategy on the supply and the demand. Now that's great. It means that we can do one-on-one -on -one calls for that. But in the instances where uh, it's uh, you get a mismatch, that's when we move into it being a, a bespoke workshop so that you can um, hit 30 or 40 people on one thing. And SEO is, is an example of that. We've got a lot of uh, people who are wanting SEO and less people that know how to advise, uh, less experts that know how to advise on it. Um, Amazingly to me, and again, this is the generosity of the of the digital industry for and people who really care about their own communities. You can see here the amount of time that volunteers are saying that they're willing to dedicate per week, over and above their paid over and above their paid job out of their spare time. So you can see uh, again about seventy five percent are willing to dedicate between one and five hours per week because of the crisis. Now, in normal times, I think we'd be lucky if it were, you know, one hour a month or two hours a month. But what you're seeing here is incredible generosity because the ability to um, help out um, in an area of your expertise in your community is something that really speaks uh, speaks to people. Um, so does it work? Uh, does volunteering work? If you're putting an expert together with somebody who's sort of um, not learned in that, does it work? Well, this is kind of classic education. So of course, of course it works. Um, I just wanted to look here at some of the positive feedback from early testing in calls and workshops. Um, and, uh, and, and again, you're seeing, we're seeing a net promoter score of 100, which is, um, a, a, is an outstanding result. It's in the upper percentile. Um, I suspect that something more in the upper quartile is what we would expect for the first year. But again, the format that we used for supporting the volunteers and also so for, for supporting the people who are asking for help seems to really be, um, be on, the, on the money here. Um, and I, we've just sort of hear from Breakfast of Champions, which is one of the companies that was reaching out for help. Um, they felt that there were clear objectives to the section. They got lots of detail, good communi communication, and they ap appreciated the, the follow-up material. Um, and then just over here, you've got Tom from Aspen Wines, um, who um, had a one-to-one -one session with one of uh, the marketeers, social marketeers. And on the back of just that one session, he was able to launch their first digital ads campaign. And he also learned how to retarget and refine their ads uh, and to continue tweaking and optimizing. Uh, and that gave him the confidence to make the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth um, step. And again, I'm imagining that every single day, we will supply information and a nudge, either another suggestion for a one-on-one -on -one call with a volunteer, or pull, you know the, the perfect future learn course for you, or maybe the perfect Coursera course or the perfect LinkedIn course. Again, they've made masses of information that historically used to be charged for um, pre-COVID. Um, they've made things that historically, again, you know, only money could buy, uh, and now the crisis has bought it, uh, and so it's all completely available for you on a personalized basis, which is amazing. Um, and I just look at one of the other uh, charities that we've helped in this instance. Uh, so we go to wine and a company to a, a charity called Teens in AI, uh, and they, after their first call, they actually were able to focus on what were the essential steps that they should take. Uh, and they connected with somebody. And they, they also had several follow-on calls with that same mentor. So again, we don't, you know, we'll put people together, you know, once if they want to keep on that relationship, that's, that's great. It's up to people and volunteers what they do in their spare time. Um, if you're going to pull much time out of people's free time, it has to be really uh, a really good experience for them. Uh, and I'm really pleased to say that at the moment, uh, again, the volunteers like helping just as much as the small businesses who previously, 
you know, uh, didn't go on the, the digital learning journey uh, like being helped, which is, again, it's, a, it's, it's rare when this, when this happens. And you can see here the volunteers there, um, some of the previous volunteering that they've been encouraged to do might have been, you know, take a whole day out of your schedule and go paint a fence or go, you know, go, go do something physical or, you know, pick up, you know, again, if it's a COVID response, maybe go pick up things for vulnerable people and take it to their home. Um, but the ability to use their their sort of knowledge and their skills in a remotely delivered framework really seems to work in this in this case. You can see Kim, uh, who's a volunteer, um, talking about again she's from blue array uh, which is an seo company uh, and she loves the idea of supporting a large uh, group of business leaders so again there's 40 business leaders at a at a uh, at a, a swipe that uh, that she's been helping out with workshops uh, or you look at cindy here uh who um who loved giving back and this i think was a was a match in her own community as well so um i think it's amazing how it works Works. I'm just going to take you through um, uh, the, the platform. Um, you either sign up as a person who needs help, or you say you're going to get help. You can see there's you know calls, workshops, or skills, uh, and then there's a giant library. But that library is just for small business leaders on their digitization journey. Uh, and uh, and again, so it, it means that they have to do a lot less searching, which saves them a huge amount of a uh, huge amount of time. First time there's a tiny little diagnostic to just figure out a little bit more about who you are and we force you to say what your top three needs are. Um, and then you can sort of see here with the different boosts in the journey. We're not, we haven't put together a website. We put together a, a, a personalized service to help um, literally millions of individuals navigate um, very specialized resources to help them get out of, uh, get out of COVID. Um, so again, this year you can just sort of see, hey, you're good to go, book your first call. We can see that you're in the West Mid Midlands, so this is going all. And we can also see that uh, Google Digital, Digital Garage, in this case, has an upcoming webinar in the next couple of days that is highly relevant or it's exactly what you said you wanted to know about. So why don't you, why don't you join that? Um, and again, I, th I think the combination of uh, local and national resources are um, super, super important here. Um, the getting rid of the friction, because again, how do you organize this? Uh, so again, the, the platform collects eight or nine different times when you are available, the person who's asking. Um, it, from a product point of view, we thought, well, why don't you just ask, tell the volunteers, the volunteers will say when they're available and the people who are asking for the help can just pick something like that. And we really wanted something that empowered the, the small business leaders and the people who worked for the charities. So we flipped it and said, well, you say when it's convenient for you to hear to, you know, to meet somebody who's an expert and um, we'll see if that works. And it, it does work. Uh, so far, we've got 100% um, take up, take up rate. So we've not yet been able, we've not yet been unable to match a volunteer to someone who's asked for help at a time that the person has asked for help. Um, which is again extraordinary, and it shows the generosity of the community of which we're um, a part. Uh, this is just showing uh, again uh, making it super easy. So we didn't. What we found out from volunteers is they didn't want to make their phone number available or their email available. Again, these are people they they don't know. So the solution to that was to uh, again whiz up. You know, I, I can't remember where we're in switcher switcher studio at the moment but it, you know zoom call or meets or or whatever the ability for them to meet uh in a in a in a place where they didn't divulge their personal information was important so uh so I, we've automated we've auto automated that um really important when you're bringing together people that don't know each other um that you can uh, allow that feedback loop so after each encounter be it a webinar be it a future learn course, be it a LinkedIn course, be it a, uh, uh, be it, you know, be it a, you know, course, Coursera um, or a one on one. We ask you what you thought of that person or the workshop or the piece of content. Um, and we don't recommend in the future those that weren't well reviewed uh, on a number of occasions. Um, and, and I think that's really important. So the database is cleaning itself. And uh, and we're working out, and the 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 good stuff is rising to the top, and the the less good or not good yet is uh, is is you know is not being recommended. And um, when you're trying to solve something at scale at this level, 
uh, again, for 6 million businesses at scale. That's um, how we've gone about doing it. Um, I've talked about workshops, which I think are an important part of things. Just the, the boost skills. Again, you can sort of see here with the library, business strategy was the, the, first, uh, the first and foremost skill. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about people have said, well, um, there are businesses that for profit um, supply business strategy. Why would you know? Why would you you know? Aren't you competing with them? Uh, and 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 it, you know, this is a crisis, and this is people volunteering an hour or two of their time. If you're looking for somebody to execute or or create your business's strategy, that's a different thing, and we're not doing that. Um, what we're doing is helping people get onto a into a position where they they know what to do and they know how to execute. Um, same as online marketing and sales, you remember that that was about 30% of the requests that we were given um, and setting up a, a website. But there's a there's a there's a long list of uh, of skills and materials that we put together uh, again and been amazed with the generosity and creativity of you know companies like FutureLearn, Google, LinkedIn, Coursera. Um, I think Coursera it's itself gave us more than uh, again, more than a, a million pounds worth of courses to disperse to the small businesses in the in the UK community. Uh, that's a that's a that's a lot of free courses, and that's a lot of waived profit for 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 them as an organisation. Um, so again, it's it's nice to see it um, at a local at a local level. One of the things that we also thought was really important for the volunteers was that they were thanked. Um, this is their own free time. Uh, so you can see here that um, something we call Boost Insights. And at a local level, you will be able to see in that, uh, in that geographic area, which six companies employed the people who helped most of the organizations with their donation of time. So this is just looking in the Northeast and it's saying 116 business leaders volunteered 1,422 hours of their time. Um, and, and then along the bottom, you see the, the photos of the actual individuals with their pictures. That's just the last six people in this case, the Northeast, who had volunteered their, their time. Um, it's, you know, this is people's free time. So we wanted to think of a way of celebrating what they were doing in their, in their communities. Um, and uh, hopefully every single journalist in the world will be uh, Clicking the alert button, you can follow. You can follow this in your local community, and you can see what's going on in your local community. And uh, you know, I think thanking folks who are helping out in their communities is 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 really important. Um, from a central government point of view, often um, you've got tens of millions of pounds or hundreds of millions of pounds, in this case, billions of pounds that are being um, being put, you know, made made available. Um, we've also created here uh, again sort of a, a feature that allows you to by local authority or in Scotland, DIW group or in England, local enterprise partnership to see the number of boosts that have taken, uh, taken place. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> and I've got just two minutes left before we go into questions. Sorry, Justin. Um, and and I, just here, I wanted to highlight um, Something that has been really amazing from this from this project, uh, and this uh, this is just some of the organisations that have come together in the last uh, in the last sort of six six or eight weeks and donated time, their content uh, or their materials. Again, with, you know, uh, with incredible generosity to solve this to solve this problem. So again, we've had a huge amount of help from uh, DCMS uh, and the, and particularly the Digital Skills Partnership. And if you look at Bayes. Uh, with their growth hubs and Innovate UK, again, uh, their support and matching, you know, the people who they've given finance to, they love the idea of also giving them uh, mentoring so that their people on a one-to-one -one basis can also pull themselves up in the most effective way to, to make sure that they get their online revenues. CBI, Chamber of Commerce, IOD, FSB, Tech UK have all been absolutely amazing partners. The material that they've put together, they've uh, you know welcomed us distributing it, and uh, you know within our journey, and they've done you know uh, they've helped promote it and a number of other things to their members. Um, you know, Catalyst, Growth Mentor, Tech London Advocates have been amazing, uh, amazing partners. From corporates, um, Google this morning uh, again sort of talked about how they, you know, they were 
uh, donating at least 10,000 hours of Googlers time in the UK over this platform. Um, it, huge generosity, which is amazing. And also they've got done really great things on Google My Business and Google Garage. Um, Facebook has been huge, LinkedIn, uh, it, hundreds of hours uh, of courses made available straight into your inbox because of their generosity to share uh, to share what they've got. Same goes for Bloomberg and Coursera, Barclays Visa Experian, amazing academic institutions, London Business School and University of Cambridge Insight. We've got literally 20 MBAs working on uh, some of the mappings over the summer. Uh, and again, the uh, enthusiasm for the, uh, for the, uh, you know, the universities to support this uh, as a means of also supporting their students, many of whom had classic uh, non-virtually delivered work experience uh, canceled has been huge. Um, and I, again, a shout out to McCann, PeerPoint, Array, Clear Channel, and PhD. Um, they've hosted a lot of webinars and really changed a lot of people's lives. Uh, and I'll finish up with McCann, who uh, put a team on this, and you can just see on this page, um, the most exquisitely beautiful branding, uh, and that 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 they've you know made available to us with the team that they uh, they put together. So, it's been you know a team effort. Um, Clear Channel as well gave us twenty uh, gave us more than a thousand billboards throughout the country, so that anybody who happens to be walking past a billboard, which hopefully will be more now, uh, can see can see that there's help there for them. So excited about where we are. Been amazed with people coming together from government, business, experts, corporates, academics, and agencies to really address a problem that is all of our problem, um, but also a, a solution and opportunity for, for all of us. So thank you. Uh, I think that's probably the end of my sort of 30 minutes. I'm very happy to answer questions. Um, it's one of the good things that I think has come out of, the, uh, out of this uh, horrendous pandemic that we're in is watching the community come together and uh, not put up with the status quo of, oh, this is a really bad problem, you know, uh, but just saying, no, this is a, this is a bad problem, but you know, we can, we can, we can kick this. Um, so, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Sherry. That was, that was amazing. It was inspiring. I think virtual hand claps um, can be heard resonating across the internet right now. Um, so we've had some really great questions um, being asked as you've been speaking. Um, please, everyone um, listening, watching, um, please keep to adding those to the chat line. I'll try and get as many of those uh, as I can. Um, but starting, Sherry, I think really for, for me, um, how do we um, harness this momentum to keep this kind of uh, initiative going kind of post COVID? Uh, well, I, I think it's a great, a great question. Um, volunteering has always been a big part of, uh, of my life. And I think, uh, and I think it's a big part of lots of people's lives. So, well, let's get past COVID first would be my thing. I mean, we're by no means past, past COVID, but many people have said, so you've set this up to solve COVID, what happens in 12 months time? Um, I think there's a huge necessity of bringing together the community to to solve, to help people continue to re relearn. Uh, and with our industries restructuring at the rate that they're restructuring, if you can, um, as a volunteer expert in an area, find somebody who needs, you know, it's like a needle in a haystack. I'm willing generally to help people on double-sided marketplaces, but um, because that's what I view myself as an expert in, but not everybody needs that. So how do you bring that together? And I, I think that platforms and platforms like like this are 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 perfect for that. So uh, you know, be it you know, and we were approached by Boston Consulting Group Digital Ventures because we had a volunteering platform. Um, we've relabeled it. It's uh, this you know the the the, the first one we started at with it, and which is still going strong is Founders for Schools got a new front end and it does some of the things differently, but it's still matchmaking people who have time and who want to do something good in their community. Uh, and the need for doing good things in your community that around your skill space isn't going to change after, after COVID isn't a part of it. But the time pressure we all face is going to, going to remain. So I love the fact that it takes about 15 seconds to to sign on, um, if you're on LinkedIn or your business is, uh, you know, files accounts in the UK, then um, it's constantly updated for you. Because um, again, you'll OR through LinkedIn, and then we'll keep your profile up to date. That means that as we flash your profile to the person who's asking, they can choose you. Uh, 
um, and you don't have to keep on going back and updating stuff. You were very likely to keep uh, the, the government database, you know, you're, you're going to file your accounts because it's a legal criminal act not to. So that's, you know, that, it's good that we've connected our platform to the government platform. So your business data is updated. Good. Um, very unlikely that you're going to disconnect from LinkedIn, I would say, and I would hope. So, you know, when you update LinkedIn, you also update your profile on, on digital, on digital boosts. And those are time saving things. We're, we're going to, you know, and then if you want to give help in, you know, something, very niche, um, perfect. Somebody in that long chain, you know, that long tail is going to need that. And our little algorithms are going to pick up that there's a supply and demand ability to match to match the two together. Um, and that, you know, that will persist well, well after uh, again, and it was pre COVID that we put together the volunteering platform that that enabled that. Um, and the same goes for, you know, future learns courses and LinkedIn courses is you need this It's like, oh, well, we know from the mapping exercise we did with FutureLearn that there is a course that's available. Not just a, you know, it's a two or three hour one. It's perfect. This person's in crisis. They don't have six months to go off and get a you know a Harvard MBA or a, you know something like that. But they do have a few hours to solve out a real a real threat to their business. Boom, here you go. So the mapping that we have done in the last few weeks will give and give and give and give um, you know to the community uh, from you know from here on in. Thank you. That's great. Um, I'm going to combine a couple of questions because there's there's some on a theme. But before I do that, I wanted to ask you, you've, you've achieved so much in such a short period of time. But what do you think is sort of missing that you really feel you need? Ooh. Um, well, I think we are at almost at day zero of the coronavirus pandemic. So uh, what we have is a is a functioning platform that is capable of super connecting uh, volunteers with people who are asking for help. Um, so we need, and there are some, you know, there are some pleas that uh, or requests that we're getting that we can't yet answer. And so what we're doing in those cases is making sure that we reach out to, again, sort of CBI, you know, FSB, and saying, you know, can you help? Can you help with this? So that coordination. Um, is really is really super important and we don't you know those changes we've already seen just in the you know the first you know is the 9th of june when out of you know hiding out of stealth it was it was launched um and you've every day there are new skills that are being presented to us where we don't we don't yet have volunteers so that that coordination of oh they've just asked for this we don't yet have a, a resource for it um I, you know please there's a lot the uh, I, you know how we how we, you know, publicize every day, you know, this is, you know, this is what we've been asked for. We can't find any volunteers with it. We reach out to you. Um, so I think volunteers continuing the volunteering is super, super, super important. Um, if there are, you know, it's a double-sided marketplace. You need, you need both. We need lots of volunteers. There's 6 million businesses um, and 180,000 charities. And the people that work for them haven't previously upskilled themselves for a variety of reasons in digital and that's a it's a really important problem so if you're a skilled digital expert and you haven't yet volunteered on digital based uh, please do so today um, if you've got materials and if you if you can do more like we saw McCann had given us again an amazing sort of thing we saw clear channel gave us a thousand billboards you know for free we saw this morning Google, you know, signed up for 10,000 hours of, uh, of volunteering. These are all really great, really great things. And they help us solve this problem that we don't want to, we don't want to put up with. So, uh, I mean, you name it, I need it. If you can help get in touch, um, we're absolutely keen. We're also clearly, as you can imagine, hiring. Uh, and we particularly need full stack, uh, full stack engineers. So if you are a full stack engineer uh, or you know one, uh, we need both front end and uh, and back end to keep feeding those algorithms and uh, and continuing continuing this. Fantastic! You heard Sherry, everybody. Um, let's get volunteering. Let's get let's get and the full stacks. Let's come on. Let's get get going here. Full stack engineers. <laughs> uh, 
that. Um, so, so thinking about sort of um, you know your world and and sort of you know what you were what you were sort of pioneering kind of as as all of this sort of played out sort of um, um, what have you seen in terms of um, business kind of startups and or business kind of positives I guess over these very very challenging kind of last few months. Uh, well, I, I think in both ed tech and health tech, I've seen incredible, um, incredible demand, which is being satisfied, which is being satisfied online. Uh, so, uh, and I particularly am aware of, of ed tech, where some of the platforms that I'm available have had, you know, 40 times, 50 times the volumes than two or three, you know, two or three months previously, um, which is excellent. I mean, it's also it's also fairly stressful for the individual who's running those businesses because suddenly they, uh, you know, they didn't anticipate. You know, your line going. You know, usually it's if even at twenty percent, that's fairly stressful. But this is like forty x overnight. So, they're you know, it just. But luckily, you know, if they're on AWS or Google Cloud, you can dial up. You know, you can dial up your demand. And if you're online, uh, and I think that you've seen communities come together, particularly for. Uh, for health, for health, you know, for health. I love the science community coming online and solving these, solving these problems, um, or at least collaborating to solve to solve these problems. I'm sure that we will have uh, solutions of a medical nature to, you know, to these things. But what I've seen mostly has been in ed tech, um, and uh, you know, and on learning. People have a hunger, have a huge hunger to learn. And if if the organization previously had digitized, they can absolutely serve in beautiful things. And I'm sure that you're uh, enjoying that to a certain degree also at, at Future Learn, but you're trying not to you know, toot your own horn <laughs> so, very, very much. Um, but, you know, if you if you look at sort of, you know, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to name particular ed techs because it's probably aside from Future Learn, it's probably not that not that fair. But, you know, people are turning online our communities won't let them, you know, are, isn't going to let them down. And then it's an issue there, not of survival, but of what can we do? Who do we have that can help supercharge this CTO who's absolutely struggling because they under, you know, they might have underinvested in something. Um, and you know, helping somebody withstand the, you know, the the trauma of 30x, 40x is, uh, you know, it's fine. I, I don't, I'm, I'm very accustomed to doing that. I'm, I'm less accustomed to putting up with allowing people to run out of money because they can't access their customers online. Um, and I think, I think possibly time for one more question. Um, so um, if we were kind of to project forward, say, you know, five, maybe even 10 years, um, and sort of be able to kind of reflect back on this, this, this period, and um, what would we like to kind of be able to kind of see as as we look as we look back as being the sort of seismic sort of shifts that you've sort of mentioned in your your presentation today and and perhaps kind of share share some some light on kind of what you'd like us to kind of be able to look back on this tough tough, tough time and say you know these these outcomes you know, they were tough but um, the world is better better for it we come together volunteering online etc. What um, well, I'd love to see, I sort of pointed out that there's a 60 point delta between uh, digitalization of people and big businesses or small businesses that should be eradicated. And I don't want to wait five years. I, I'd like to actually eradicate that within a, within a year, but five years might be, might be more reasonable. Um, no, a year, let's say even three months, you know, it's unacceptable to have that, to have that. Um, so I think that, that, that should be eradicated. I, it will accelerate the move to digital, digital, and that will sort out the productivity issue, which people have been really annoyed um, by for for a long time. I hope, um, but I'm not yet certain, I hope that the regional disparity that we see um, doesn't become greater, but I think we need to be mindful and make sure that that's, that that's not the case. Um, but again, I think digital friend, I think digital tools can be our friends, uh, can be our friends for that. I love at Founders for Schools putting some of the some of the kids uh, in the Outer Hebrides in touch with people who are in London. And historically, if you had to have them in classrooms, you couldn't make that journey, but you can make the journey in this sense. And that's changing people's hearts and minds and aspirations and attainment um, right in front of our, our, our eyes. And I, I love that. I think it's, I think it's really encouraging. Um, I hope that we will see in 10 years a uh, vaccine and maybe we'll be a lot more prepared for the next pandemic that comes so that it's not as, uh, as painful an exercise, um, but you know, there this won't. This isn't the first, and it won't. It won't be the last. Uh, I hope it's. I hope it's the worst. Um, but really, the the main thing is accelerate to digital, 
um, allow people to work from home uh, a lot more. I, I think that it's really quite exciting. I mean, I, I do miss people and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, others more frequently, but it is pretty terrific to, to be able to work from home and only think about commuting. And, you know, maybe I, again, I live in Cambridge, but maybe one or two days a week rather than as frequently. And you, you're just as productive. These having mass adoption of these tools and having them work, this has actually worked quite well. Um, and uh, I think the ability to communicate with others and to learn, learn together and solve problems together, I think that will be significantly enhanced. And maybe it felt uncomfortable having a Zoom or other uh, video commu- you know, conversation months ago. And maybe we felt that we had to all get gather into a giant hall in order to be able to understand each other. But I think that, that um, some of these tools allow us to be you know, much more connected than they were together. And only good things can come out of that. I, you know, I'm trying not to put my investor hat on, but I reckon we're gonna see some absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal uh, global dominant companies that come out because they've solved this problem or this panoply of problems that we have. And that will be terrific for humanity. It will probably be very terrific for some of the investors in that. Uh, And, you know, I can only wish more power to the entrepreneurs that are um, focusing on solving those problems. The best thing for an entrepreneur is to solve on a problem that every, you know, to focus on a problem that everybody wants to solve. Well, there's a few problems that we we need solving and a great opportunity to focus on that. Uh, uh, well, Sherry, listen, you've you've once again sort of uh, put your entrepreneurial hat on and you've been, in, in, we've all been incredibly impressed by just hearing your story of how you've solved, you, you've endeavoured to solve another another problem in your long list of problem solving career to date. And, you know, thank you for joining us as part of this kind of, you know, globally connected community this afternoon. It's been really fantastic to to kind of um, listen and, and, and ask you kind of um, to get your sort of thoughts on things. So, Thank you everybody for uh, participating. I think that really does conclude um, FutureLearn's Festival of Learning. Uh, what a festival that's been. Um, we're looking forward to uh, sharing with you the dates for the next. Um, Sherry, thank you so much for being with us uh, today. And thank you all for attending. Thank you for your questions. And thanks to all of the organizers as well for making this such a great week and a great session. Um, I think that's it for me now. So I'll uh, sort of um, sign off um, and um, hope to see you all in the real world soon. As a learning designer at FutureLearn, it's fair to say that I love learning. And from a design perspective, I love to see courses with a good mix of step types and learning types, the ways in which learners can interact and engage with the course material and each other. A course I love that does this really well is A History of Rural Food and Feasting. It's by the University of Reading. It presents historical accounts, gives learners choice and space to explore with lots of extra resources. It fosters discussion about contemporary attitudes to food and feasting and has a really strong narrative. It keeps you engaged, you're aware of what's coming up and you're excited to move through the course. I particularly love the innovative ways in which the team have encouraged learner production. The course has even got recipes so you can try them out at home, which is just a brilliant way to get people involved. They have examples of recipes to make and then they can share their experience and pictures on a Padlet wall. This is such a great way to encourage social learning experience. I'm a big fan of this course called Becoming a Better Music Teacher from the ABRSM. It's been hugely popular with music teachers from all over the world and I think one particular step demonstrates why. Early on in the course, the instructors introduced the concept of a teaching philosophy, basically the core principles that lie at the heart of someone's approach to teaching. They then used the discussion step to ask learners to share their own personal teaching philosophies. It's a course aimed at teaching professionals, and most teachers I know love to talk about their professional practice. So as you can imagine, the question elicits some rich responses. These are a few responses from music teachers taking the course. My philosophy is to inspire a love of music through self-expression instead of aiming to achieve perfect technicality. Music should be fun and pupils love doing it. Pupils will only be motivated to improve if they have a genuine love of what they're doing. My new philosophy is to build the skills of students to read music in the same way they would read their favourite book. This starts with teaching them how to read music, then exploring the story of each musical piece. My teaching philosophy is to inspire pupils of all ages, My instruction is always tailored to the individual needs of the pupil. I enjoy the challenge of making my lessons interesting and fun and being part of their musical journey. But as you can see, the engagement from these teachers is very high, making it a fantastic example of social learning as well as an opportunity for individual reflection. 
My favourite FutureLearn course that I've done was called Gravity, the Big Bang, Black Holes and Gravitational Waves by Parry Diderot. I actually did this course a couple of years ago, but because it was presented in such an interesting way, it's really stuck in my mind. I love learning more about physics and our universe, and for me this course was special because it was packed with such engaging and sometimes very funny videos that really helped me understand the material. So for example, in this step, looking at the law of falling bodies, the lead educator uses a mixture of special effects, real-time experiments and traditional classroom techniques. So I think he uses a whiteboard to bring physics to life. You really feel like you're in a personal classroom with him, just with the added benefit of a green screen. You don't feel like you're being lectured to, it's more like you're having a really engaging conversation. And that's the reason I'll remember the course for years to come. My favourite course on the FutureLearn platform is called Genomic Medicine, Transforming Patient Care and Diabetes from the University of Exeter. As a type 1 diabetic myself, I found this course really informative. When I was diagnosed at 16, type 1 diabetes was only ever explained to me at a very basic level, and access to this course meant that I could learn so much more about my condition that I never even knew. The social learning community on this course is made up of a mixture of healthcare professionals and people who either have type 1 diabetes themselves or have someone close to them affected by the condition. I particularly appreciated the patient's stories throughout the course and I found Dan's story in week 2 particularly memorable as we were diagnosed at the same age and I could really relate to this story. I'm really thankful that this course exists on the platform and is a resource for people across the world living with diabetes. I love learning that helps connect an online course to things I can show people easily and help them see why the topic I'm studying is fun and engaging. I'm quite digital and a bit of a paper phobe, so it may surprise people when I say one of my favourite courses on FutureLearn is Flexagons and the Math Behind Twisted Paper with Yossi Elran from the Weizmann Institute of Science. Yossi has a wonderful ability to bridge that awkward gap between the digital platform of FutureLearn with our own world by using just colourful pieces of paper. Several parts of the course encourage learners to leave the platform in order to print out templates of folding paper that help explain complex mathematics and the curious minds of mathematicians. Look, it's a folding piece of paper. The purpose is to talk about the way these mathematical marvels work and why they have captured people's imaginations for many years. They even inspired Richard Feynman's work that led to a Nobel Prize. I enjoy this course on a personal level because it uses very lo-fi technology, paper, which can go from explaining why a one-edged piece of twisted paper could lead you on a journey of complex maths and discovery.